Mm, G'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Mage Knight. Just in case you don't realize what's going on here, these are my test games. So I'm designing my own Mage Knights just as a little PNP project. That's a print and play project. I'll be releasing template files for people to make their own stuff and also the printable files and the Mage Knights will be added to at least my mod on Tabletop Simulator and Tuff said that as long as they're not terrible, he'll add them as well to his really famous mod so other people can play with them. So what I'm doing is, is I'm doing a lot of play testing which you're not seeing on the channel. That's actually why the videos have slowed down a little bit because I'm spending most of my time playing Mage Knight. The first video in this series was me playing a solo game with the very first version of the Necromancer. Many of his skills and cards are in revision three already. And I've also created the Dryad, which is the life magic sort of sister Mage Knight that's going to be released in this mini expansion. So it's going to be death and life. Now she's in a much earlier state and she could be a little bit OP at the moment. I'm trying to, I'm going to have to cut back some of these abilities. Anyway, regardless of that, what I'm doing with these videos is that the first video was round one and two. This video is round two and three. But as you can see, it's a completely different game. And that's what's going to be happening. Basically, I'm just going to upload occasional videos of two rounds a piece just of my play testing, just to involve you guys with what's happening with these characters. And so I can get your comments if you wish to leave any. So yeah, that's about it. This is full cooperative solo. See, now that I've got the Necromancer and the Dryad sort of built in a way that I can do the, the play testing together, I'm gonna to basically do co-op and competitive two-player games. My next thing is I'm going to do a Volcare competitive and see how they go against that. And I also want to do a Tesla competitive and see how they can stack up against those large faction bosses that this game has. Now, in the last video, I talked a little bit about what the Necromancer is and how he functions. And just to basically summarize, he's kind of a combo deck. Now, like all combo decks, he has a very, very powerful final effect but it's fragile. If you don't spend time building the frame that supports the combo, then the combo won't trigger and the deck won't function very well. And that's the way I want this guy to be, a kind of, when, when he goes off, he can do incredibly powerful moves, like ridiculously powerful. But I don't want that to go off every single game. Maybe every two or three games is what I'm aiming for, for these crazy moves to be able to be pulled off. It really depends on how much crystal generation you generate during the game. So, you know, get that offering spell if you can. So he focuses on, you know, raising people from the dead and using them instead of units, that kind of thing. Meanwhile, the Dryad, which you guys haven't seen before, you'll be seeing in this video, is a much more traditional knight, as in traditional like the corset knights. All her abilities are slightly modified existing abilities except for a two. Like for example, her card Regenerate is basically a modification of Rejuvenate, which is Novak's card and stuff like that. So I've tried to make her much more conservative and more traditional to the original game. Of course, because of that, she plays very, very well so far anyway, unlike the Necromancer who's doing very wild things and can be very sometimes weak, sometimes super strong, which is kind of what he's supposed to be. She's completely focused around life magic. And the way I've interpreted that inside the game rules is green mana and healing effects. So she has heal effects and ways of using wounds. And she's also got affinity for forests. So she gets bonuses when she's in forests. And that is basically it. You'll see more of her in action during round three and four. I guess uh, that's the end of the introduction. So let's uh, let's actually get into the rounds and I'll uh, we'll, we'll do a couple of turns. So we're back in the game. Let's have a quick look at the game state and then we'll start. Basically, we had a pretty bad opening tile. So we had these three tiles came out, right? And they just had bad sights on them. There was very little to attack. The Dryad had pretty good luck. She went this way and basically 
was able to, uh, you know, take out a bunch of orcs. She had glades to sit on. She's actually on a glade right now. So I better just give her a gold mana so I don't forget. You get gold mana and black mana at the beginning of your turn, not at the end. Meanwhile, the necromancer went the other way and he went through this location. And so once he got to here, he could go this way to get this guy, then backtrack, but he decided to just go straight up. This one here, you know, you can't explore that way, so that was really out of the way. He might, Maybe he should have gone that way, because he could have gone spell, move, artifact, and then got this thing, and then move this way. So that was probably what he should have done, but that's not what he did. So he, he didn't have a lot of things to attack. So the Necromancer's way behind the curve. In fact, he's a full thing over behind. And uh, that means he gets to choose first, choose uh, his tactic first. So he's going to take planning, which I think is one of the best tactics for competitive play. And oh, let's, let's actually just draw the cards first, see what kind of cards the Dryad has. Now, the Dryad's got a very good opening hand. She's got two really great attack cards plus an improvisation. So we need to kill this dude. We're going to lose at least three cards, probably, because we need to do blocking, which means I'm going to take a great start. That's just going to give us two extra cards, and we're off and running. Right, so. Now, to what I was saying before, we can either go this way, maybe get this thing here, get the monster den, come up here and attack the city. But I really want to take out this dragon. This dragons are great, it's like nine points. And if we resurrect this guy, we've got a cold fire six attack and we've got cold fire resistance and nine armor. He's a great dragon to have on our board. So that's my goal is to get here and then kill. Now, I should be able to kill this guy because most castles and in fact, most mage towers, if you can produce six attack, you can kill them uh, and we can produce six attack. So if we do a move and we do an attack, yeah, so basically we'll have to use our mana draw and produce five attack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a simple two move. Uh, I'm gonna do it with this guy and just move here. I don't know. Did I take a crystal last turn? I can't remember. So I'm just gonna move here and flip him over and see what he is. Oh yeah, so he's a five attack, like I said. Most most pugs, except there's somewhere around in one of these pugs, there is a golem with five physical resistance, so you need 10 attack to kill him. But pretty much if you can produce five or six, you can, well, if you can produce six, you can basically kill everyone. If you can produce five, you can kill almost every one of these pugs. Point is, this is, uh, this is ready to kill. So that's his turn. But the important thing is now that he's actually done that and got planning, he gets an extra card. It gets him to six cards draw because of planning. Meanwhile, over here, oh, look, we drew our other heal card. So we are absolutely rolling. And we've got a crystal. Okay, so basically we're going to attack this Dragion. Now the dragon is hitting us for six and that produces 12 damage because of brutal. So 12 divided by three is four. That's one, two, three, four. We are not worried about these wounds at all because the dryad has all her heals up. She's got both the heal skills got came up and we got a heal spell in hand. So we're basically <laughs> immortal right now. And we only need to do eight damage, which we can do quite easily with these two awesome attack cards. There is a gold in the in the source as well. So this one is four move as attack, so that's four attack. And this one is four attack plus reputation bonuses and stuff. So four plus four is eight. Eight physical damage kills this dude. So that is that, so he's done. That's the end of that dragon. So we've got her heal spells here, and these are basically the same as the other, The other, I think it's Goldex's ones, which are just create a crystal and a heal. So that is heal and a white mana, uh, heal and a green mana. So we get a green and we get a heal. 
And then I'm going to cast this, which is a double heal. So that goes out and that goes out. And then we finish our turn on a glade. So that goes out. Plus we get a gold mana for the next turn. So that is a pretty good turn. But ammo. Oops. Get in there. So that is eight fame that takes us to 26. We get one, two rep for killing a dragon, but we also use chivalry. So we get one extra fame and one extra rep. That's a pretty damn good turn. Okay, so back to our poor necromancer, drawing up to six now. Okay, so we have, okay, so we've got two, four to get in. Unfortunately, it's four to get in because this is a three because of the, uh, the wall. And we've basically got no attack cards here, so we're gonna have to let that hit us. So we've got three armor that gives us one, two wounds. And we're gonna go five damage, that kills him. So improvisation makes five damage. And now I'm gonna res him, I think. So to do that, I need to do a mana draw. And I can take a black crystal. So basically, all the, this is our undead horde one. This allows us to put multiple undead onto unit slots. But we also have two skills that come out here, skill one and skill two, that also allow you to resurrect one unit. And they have the same resurrection text, which is... Directly after defeating an enemy, spend mana to raise them as undead. Enemies fame divided by two, rounded up. Black mana counts twice, even during the day. Gold is unusable, minus one reputation. The undead minion is placed upon this skill, then flip it. And then you have all the stuff for how to use the skill. And if there's ever not an undead minion on it, you flip it back over to the first side. So the point is, it is half his fame, which is two. And black mana counts twice. So if we do mana draw, take a black mana, which we can do during the day. That counts for two, which means we have resed him. That's that. Yeah, blammo. Now this bloke's turn. Oh wait, and there's more. He now has a second castle, right? So he's got two castles. I just put him down here to remind me. He has planning. So he is at five plus, oh wait, I've got to level him up. God, I'm forgetting to do everything. So he was four res, that's one, two, three, four, takes him to 17. He goes down one for attacking a keep and then down one for uh, resurrecting. And now he's leveled up. So leveling up, what are we gonna take? We've got Heroic Tail and Firebolt and we've got Intimidate. I think I'm just gonna take Intimidate because that's attack and fame. So boom, we'll take Intimidate. And let's pull out the two new skills. We have four and six. So skill four is once per turn, discard a wound to gain a black mana token or throw away a wound to turn any one black mana into a red or green. If a die is affected, then it returns or remains in the source without re-rolling. So that is a pretty damn good one. It gives us a use for our wounds and we have a lot of wounds in this guy and number six is oh that's the influence one gain two influence for every three crystals of the same color in your inventory or gain one influence for every three crystals in your inventory i'm actually going to take the mana gen one because we have an unreasonable amount of wounds at the moment in this particular run okay then we actually have five cards plus we have two keeps plus we have planning, which does work on wounds. So we're drawing eight cards next turn. Meanwhile, over here, let's draw another five. We are still in the glade. So let's take out this dude. This dude's next. 
So he's attacking us with three. We're just going to let that hit us. That's one wound in hand, one wound into the discard pile for poison. And then we're just going to attack. Let's, uh, let's do this. And pay with the gold. That kills him. We'll pay with this thing. That gives us a green mana crystal. We'll also flip this, which gives us a white crystal and also heals this wound. We finish on a glade, which heals that wound, and we end up with another gold mana in hand. Blamo, that's another really good move for her. And that is three. One, two, three, and she goes up one more rep. Okay. Now we're drawing to eight. Blamo. Well, lots of wounds here. Plus we have two intimidates. So this is producing eight influence. And this is producing nine, ten influence. We are negative one. So ten influence will get us the gunners. Thing is, I kind of want to keep this guy in the field. I wouldn't, because what I want to do, I want to get the, the weaker guy and then use him to then, when I kill the dragon, resurrect him, use his soul to resurrect the dragon. And then I want to, because I'll be still sitting on the keep and then buy this guy. So that's my plan. That's what I want to do. So what I need to do, first I need to just, uh, let's just put him in the, here. So I don't need all this. Buy both of them. I need 15, right? Because it's 8 plus 6 plus 1. And I can create a total of 8. I can create a total of 10, 15. So that's eight, nine, 10, and 15. That gives me enough to actually get both of these guys in hand, which is awesome. And I go down one rep and down two rep. One, two, three. Back over here, he's drawing up to five still. Now, there's quite a lot of action for him here. I think we're going to come down here. This thing, if we kill it, we just have to do two pugs and it gets us a unit of our choice. This guy is in the thing, so we can get this guy for free if we take that site, which is pretty awesome. And then later on, we can come up here and buy this dude. Because we really badly need to start getting units. So the question is, do we come to here and then start with a gold? Or do we come straight to here? How much movement have we got in the hand? We've got quite a lot of movement. So we need five movement to get in there. So I'm just going to go four. Five, six, I'll pay a crystallize with the gold and we'll take a red like so. So we can go five or five. I think I'm just gonna go here because I can always just come here and sit here or go back here to, to get heals. That's his turn, her turn, I should say. Now, boom. Oh, more wounds. Let's do a slow heal. Yablamo. 
Okay, what has he got? He's got two attack. We've actually got quite a good hand here. We do have a blue crystal, so we've got five block. And we've got a total of eight attack, maybe even plus two on either of them. We did have a move, so we could have gone to the other zone. Anyway, whatever. The point is, we need a castle and a mage tower. Meow. What you got for us? Ooh, one of them is a summon, so we grab a dungeon. Blip. Okay, so that is what we're dealing with. Well, we can't block this. We, well, I guess, we, what do we need to get? This guy needs six to kill, right? So we need to do that to kill him. This guy needs six to kill as well. That's four, five, six. Or we could just do it over two turns. We don't really have any other block though, right? Four will get us one, two, three, four. It will not level us up, so we won't get a card. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the double wounds. Oh wait, no, what we can do, I'm an idiot. So we go blam, we'll take the green, we'll pay for this. We'll take a gold for this and we'll take a blue for this. So what we've done, we've gone block five, that blocks him. And because we've successfully blocked, the elusive doesn't trigger. That means we only need three to kill him. So four rage with the gold mana kills this guy. So that guy's dead. This guy, we have to let us hit. So we have three, so we get two wounds. And then we hit him back for four, five, six using concentration. So they're all dead. Blam. Oh, go. Blam. So that is a pretty damn good thing. We get four, five, six, seven. It's 30, go to 37. We level up. But more importantly, we actually gain a unit of our choice. So we just nab the big guy. Booyah. That is a pretty damn good, good get. Now we draw out our two new skills, blammo, blammo. We have three and four. Flip, gain a green mana crystal. When recruiting units with healing abilities, treat them as if they have the hero recruitment and the magical gate recruitment location icons and reduce their reputation cost by one. That doesn't really do much for us because it's sort of more of an early game kind of thing and also We've got so much healing. And number four is remove one attacking offensive ability and one offensive element from a single enemy. Does not work on arcane immunity. Cannot be, cannot be used to remove the fire elemental from attacks. So that's a very good ability. So this is basically a version of Wolfhawk's ability. So we're going to take that. So what I've tried to do with these is that every single ability that I've made for her is basically one of the existing abilities, just slightly modified. And that's the way I've tried to balance them. But anyway, that's a very good ability, so we're keeping that. Plus, she gets a card. Do we want more heal? This thing does not ready a level four unit. We have Crystal Generation. We have Heroic Tail. Plus one Fame and Rep. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get Heroic Tail. Bam. Okay, now let's draw to eight. And we've probably got enough. There's a one card left over. This is our hand, basically, for doing all our magic. What have we got here? We have very little attack. We have not drawn our other attack card, which means that this card should be our attack card. Range fire attack six. This guy, oh, he's got fire resistance. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to discard a blue, a single blue card to draw the other attack card. 
Unless I've thrown out, I have thrown out a card. Oh, I've thrown out Tranquility. Okay, he's going to draw again, your Blamo. He's going to go Blam and Blam. That gives him four move. And he's just going to move into here for three. It's finishing on a Glade. So this gets healed. And he gets a gold for next turn. This guy draws. Oh, what? What happened to his other attack? Oh, wait. That's right. This is his other attack card. I'm such an idiot. This is this is replacing Rage. Oh, well, we did get another attack card, technically. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I've done some thinking, and I've worked out exactly what I'm going to do, and it's a pretty cool move, and it shows you kind of how the Necromancer is supposed to be functioning once it gets a little bit running. Basically, we want to resurrect this dragon, and we want to kill him. So we're going to use an undead horde to resurrect him. So the undead horde says, got the exact same resurrection text. A direct after defeating an enemy, spend mana of any kind to raise it as undead. Enemy's fame divided by two, round it up. Black mana counts twice. Gold is unusable. Place on an unwounded unit or existing horde. Maintain slot activation status. Units can hold undead up to their level. Minus three reputation. Black mana can be used during the day. Here's what we're going to be doing. He's going to attack us and he's going to hit us for four wounds. One, two, three, four. Because he's attacking for six, but he's hitting us for 12 because of Brutal. And we have three armor. Then I'm going to do a whole bunch of crystal generation. For starters, we're going to cast Crystal Mastery and we're going to pay with our blue crystal. And this says, at the end of your turn, any crystals you have spent this turn are returned to your inventory. And that includes the one that we just spent on it. So now we're going to keep all our crystals. Then I'm going to do decompose. And I'm going to pay with the red die. When you play this card, throw away an action card from your hand. Gain a crystal to your inventory of each basic color that does not match the color of the thrown away card. And I am going to throw away swiftness so i'm just going to put this like this and that gives me a blue a red and a green now i am going to kill this guy i've got two untapped units so i just go attack for three attack for five and attack for two so that's five six seven eight nine ten attack 10 physical attack kills this guy, so the dragon is now dead. Now I need to resurrect him. And to resurrect him, I need to produce 5 mana, because it's 9 divided by 2 rounded up. So we need 5 mana to resurrect this guy. So, first thing I'm going to do is use my skill here. Once per turn, discard a wound to gain a black mana token. So I'm just going to discard that wound. And that's going to get us a black mana token. Now remember, black mana counts twice. So that's two mana we've already... We only need three more mana. And we have three mana here. So I'm going to spend one mana red. I'm going to spend one mana green. And then, to be extra tricky, I'm going to do crystallize. Spend a blue mana on crystallize. Remember, I get all of this mana back because of crystal mastery. And I'm going to turn, and, and when you do this, it says, gain a crystal of any color. So I've paid with a blue. I'm going to take another red crystal. Bam. So I've just basically doubled my crystals. So this is a little combo with Crystal Mastery and Crystallize that a lot of people forget about. Because you can pay Crystal Mastery with a crystal. And then you can pay Crystal into Crystallize. You get both those crystals back because of Crystal Mastery, and you get another crystal from Crystallize. So I've just given myself an extra crystal, and that's that. So we now have one, two, three, four, five mana on the dragon, which means he is resurrected. We're going to kill this guy, use his soul to start the horde. Activation marker stays active, and boom, we have our first undead horde as well. And that is a turn, but... Remember, we get all our crystals back, except the black, of course. And that is a pretty good turn for the old Necro. Now, we hit this guy for nine. We get nine rep for that. So he gets plus two for killing the dragon, but he gets minus three for resurrecting him. So that's one, two, three. 
plus he gets nine rep, which takes him to 26, which does level him up. And now he gets another command token. And now he's at six, plus he's got planning, plus he's got two castles, so he's now drawing nine cards. That was a pretty good turn for him as well. And we have a terrible, uh, I play, by the way, I play what we call friendly mana. It's a, it's, a, it's a variant I made up called friendly mana. And one of the rules of friendly mana is if it's ever during the day or during night and it's a complete black or complete gold, you just get to re-roll the whole source. Okay, and now this guy is drawing back up to five. So he basically wants to get up to here, doesn't he? So that is one, two, three, four, five. Well, he's only got a he's only got a move four here. Seems like such a waste. So what he's going to do? He's just going to uh, oh well. He's just going to go one, two, three. We're just going to do three move. That's just going to get him to here. I'm just chucking out the influence. I may as well chuck out this one too. One, two, three, four, five move. That gets him here. We keep the gold mana. This guy. He is out of cards, but let me just search. I threw out this swiftness, didn't I? There we go. So that's going to be three to move in next turn. So we don't really want to spend five. So the question is now, does he go here and kill another dragon? To, for his horde, and then does he go here, and then get new units, and then head up to the to the castle? I think that might actually be his best plan because if he goes here, he'll retain all the extra card draw. So that's what we're going to go. We're going to go four. That is a wasteland, so that just gets him in. This guy's drawing back up to five. He has a nice big move. So this move, this is his fancy move. So this is replacing the stamina of the blue move card. And it says, pay a blue mana, move four, move cost of forest is two. If you move through two forests this turn, gain a blue mana crystal. So he's done four movement with the gold. So he can come up here, but he's got no nothing. Oh, he's got this guy, doesn't he? This guy, cold fire attack or cold fire block. That's one, two, three, four. This guy comes and attacks us. Okay, so, right, I'm back. Sorry about that, the phone rang. Uh, what was I doing? This guy's attacking. We could just block with this guy because he's got five, but I don't want to wound him really. So instead, we're just gonna let this guy hit us for two wounds. You know what I've been doing wrong? I forgot this guy's got another unit slot. He's actually down here. <laughs> so he should have been drawing an extra card. Whatever. The point is, this guy's going to hit us for two wounds. And then we're just going to attack with Blam. That's called Fire Attack 5, which of course kills this guy. Gives us another three, one, two, three, and he goes down one rep. Blammo. Now it's this guy's turn. He has nothing he can do. 
So he is going to declare end of round. And then this guy has one more turn. He's got no cards to draw, but he does have influence four. He can't buy anything. So he is also going to declare end of round. Okay. And that is the end of that. That was pretty awesome. Let's put these out here so I know that they've been discarded. We'll just reset now. Blam, blam, blam. It is new units and these get flipped over and it is now day it's now night and these guys go your bloom oops le bloom nice roll We've got beautiful roll <laughs> you know we haven't got a single no one has got a single spell in this in this game which is ridiculous and necromancer is still lowest so he gets to choose now Let's just check this out. He has, he's still next to his keep. So he has two and six. So he starts with six and he gets plus two. So he's drawing to eight cards. Blam. Oh, look at that. All those wounds. Not good. And this guy. He has six, so he's drawing to six, plus he's got two, so he's going one, two. He's also drawing to eight cards. And a much healthier hand, because he's only got one wound. Now, I might actually call it there, because that was quite on the long turn. And you wouldn't know, because it was sort of behind the scenes, but I was having an absolute hellish time recording. I kept my, the thing kept crashing. My computer's just been crashing for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. So hopefully I can get that fixed up. Well, I'm gonna edit this together and depending on how long the video is, I'll do the, the next night turn. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.